Today we're going to look at inferencing, and this applies for um, RI and RL, um, 6.1, 7.1, and 8.1. So let's look at what our story says here. Um, it says, writers don't always tell you exactly what's on their minds. Sometimes you need to make a reasonable guess, and that's important um, about what the writer thinks. A reasonable guess, which is based on both evidence and prior knowledge of a topic, is called an inference. So when you're making an inference, you're taking what you know with what you read and put it together to make an inference. So talking about the passage below, is about a creature known as the giant squid. Okay, for many years, both sailors and scientists suspected that a creature they called the giant squid lived in the ocean depths. Over the years, the evidence mounted, and in 2012 came solid proof. They filmed giant squids swimming in the ocean. Before the 2012 video, nobody had answers to several significant questions about giant squids. How did they act in the wild? Were they hunters? Or did they just float in the water, eating what came their way? What purpose did their huge eyes serve? Thanks to the video, we have some answers. We know that the squid is a hunter that uses its large eyes to spot prey and avoid being eaten. But many fascinating mysteries about the creature still needs solving. Will this important research continue? Okay, now it tells me to read it twice, but for time's sake, we're only going to read it once. But there is a purpose behind reading it twice. Okay. It wants me to go back and underline any evidence suggesting whether the writer feels scientists should keep searching for the giant squid. So, let's look for that. Evidence. All right. So, evidence suggesting whether the writer feels scientists should keep searching. That's what we're looking for, okay? So, when I go back, for many years, both sailors and scientists suspected what a creature they called the giant squid lived in the ocean depths. Okay, so I've got to keep in my mind that I'm looking for, should they keep researching the giant squid? Over the years, the evidence mounted, and 2012 came solid proof. Okay, so we already have solid proof right here. They filmed giant squids swimming in the ocean. Before the 2012 video, nobody had answers. Okay, so before then, they didn't know. Nobody had answers to several significant questions about giant squids. How did they act in the wild? Were they hunters? Did they just float in the water, eating what came their way? What purpose did their huge eyes serve? Thanks to the video, we have some answers. We know that the squid is a hunter that uses its large eyes to spot prey and avoid being eaten. But many fascinating creatures, uh, mysteries about the creatures still need solving. Okay. Will this important research continue? So, it asked me um, any evidence suggesting whether the writer feels scientists should keep researching the giant squid. Okay, so, will this important research continue? That right there shows me that the author believes that research should continue. Okay, so what does the writer think? Um, scientists should keep researching. So does the writer think that re scientists should keep researching the giant squid? You can use evidence from the text. Okay, so evidence from the text, that means that I'm finding ex my, um, it's like finding my answer, finding my clues to make an inference about what she thinks. Okay, so here's, all right, what we know plus what the text says is an inference. So it said a person with positive feelings about a type of work usually wants that work to continue. She was really into squids. She wanted to know more about them. Okay, so then what does the text tell me? Before 2012 video, nobody had answers to several significant questions about giant squids. Many fascinating mysteries about the creature still need solving. And then that last sentence said, will this important research continue? So the inference that we can make says... The author thinks that scientists should keep researching the giant squid. And this last sentence right here, will um, this important research continue? That was really my clue that told me that scientists should continue. 
Okay, so by using the text evidence that you already have, you can make and support inferences. All right, so notice the word support. That means finding that information, that text evidence, and backing it up. In a way, you can make the same kinds of educated guesses, okay? Educated guesses is important that scientists do when they study mysterious creatures of the deep. All right, so we're going to skip that right there. Ooh, sorry. I keep scrolling. All right, so tales of the chupacabras. This is, a, I like this story. So we're going to read through it, and I'm going to guide you and answer in answering um, these questions, and then I'm going to let you do Bigfoot on your own, okay? So legend tells of the chupacabra, a monster that sucks the blood of livestock. Chupacabra means goat sucker in Spanish. For many in the southwestern United States and Mexico, these tales are more than just stories. They have been accepted as fact. In Puerto Rico, in 1995, hundreds of livestock fatalities were blamed on the chupacabra. Okay, so they have a lot of mysterious deaths that they're blaming on the chupacabra. Some describe chupacabras as two-legged lizard-like creatures with claws, spikes, and piercing red eyes. Others insist they are hairless, four-legged creatures that are part kangaroo, part dog, and part rat. Can you imagine what that looks like? Many similar beasts have been brought to labs for DNA testing, but most have been coyotes with mange, a disease that strips animals of fur. Okay, so why do we want these myth uh, mythical beasts to be real? Surely not because we want livestock to fall prey to vampires. Perhaps it's because of our natural desire to shed light on the unknown. Scientists constantly identify new life forms. According to the Wildlife Wildlife, uh, Wildlife Federation, more than 1,200 species of plants and vertebrates were discovered in the Amazon rainforest between 1999 and 2009. Given this fact, the idea that undiscovered species could exist empowers our imaginations and gives us hope. Although we've explored much of this planet, there are still creatures that lurk, that means to look, to search, in the underbrush, evading recognition, so they're hiding from it. That is a thrilling concept. So even as evidence mounts against the existence of chupacabras, a part of us hopes that one will creep from the shadows and boggle our minds. Okay, so right here on my close reading, it tells me, um, according to the author, why do people hope that chupacabras are real? Okay, so looking back here, why do they hope they're real? Okay, so they... They want to know where that um, this chupacabra, why these animals are, are dying. So they're they're blaming it or putting um, all their their bets on that it's the chupacabra. And then what examples of new discoveries? Well, if I look right here, um, it says scientists constantly identify new life forms. According to Worldwide or Wildlife Federation, more than 1,200 species of plants and vertebrates were discovered in the Amazon rainforest between 1999 and 2009. Okay, so that gives me evidence that new creatures have been discovered. Okay, so that is text evidence right there. All right, so a student makes the following claim about the author of Tales of Chupacabras. The author believes that chupacabras are imaginary. Okay, even though she would like to think they exist. So I'm looking for the sentence that from the text that supports this claim. So I'm looking for those text evidence, okay? So look at A. Which sentence from the text best supports the claim? Okay, so I have to go back to the claim. Chupacabra means goat sucker in Spanish. Yes, it told me in the, that in the passage. But does that support right here that, does that tell me anything about them being imaginary? No. All right, look at B. Some describe chupacabras as two-legged, lizard-like creatures with claws, spikes, and piercing red, red eyes. Does that tell me anything about them being imaginary creatures? No. All right, so look at C. Why do we want these mythical beasts to be real? Okay, does that suggest anything about them being imaginary? Yes, I can look right here at the word mythical, 
And that leaves us to, um, to have an imagination of what they could be like. All right, so look at D. Scientists constantly identify new uh, life forms. Does that talk anything about them being imaginary? No. So my correct answer would be C. Okay, so look for words that go back, all right, imaginary, mythical. They, they go together. All right, so let's look at number two. Which sentence from the text bet, um, explains why the author thinks people want to believe in chupacabras? All right, so I have this author thinking people want to believe in chupacabras. All right, so my answers. A, for many in the southwestern United States and Mexico, these tales are more than just stories. They've been accepted as fact. So I'm looking for which sentence from the text explains why the author thinks people want to. So does that tell why? No, it doesn't. All right, B, legends, uh, legend tales of the chupacabra, a monster that sucks the blood of livestock. Does that tell me why the author thinks? No, it does not. All right, so look at C. Others insist they are hairless, four-legged creatures that are part kangaroo, part dog, and part rat. Does that tell me why? No, it does not. So let's look at D. Perhaps it's because of our natural desire to shed light on the unknown. Okay, why the author thinks people want to believe in cheaper copperas? Perhaps, see, it's answering my question, why? Perhaps it's because of our natural desire to shed light on the unknown. So the correct answer is D.